Every company on earth needs good visuals to promote their products. In case you didn't know, the world spends about $850 billion every single year on advertising. So if you can contribute to this industry, you can definitely make some money. And if you wanna learn more about product visualization and how to make money as a 3D artist, then check out my Blender School. Now, no more bullshit, let's get to work. You get a reference image for this microphone. I just Googled this thing on my phone so now I can look at it. And now with Shift A, we're gonna add a cylinder which has 48 vertices. In object mode, you're gonna rotate this cylinder by 90 degrees around the Y axis. You have to do this in object mode because then you're also gonna change the local axes for this cylinder. That's gonna make it a lot easier to move this object later on. Now in edit mode with Control R, we're gonna add 15 loop cuts to this cylinder. The reason we're adding exactly 15 loop cuts is because that gives us little squares on the surface of this cylinder. And that's gonna ensure that we have good topology and we're going to be able to use a clean workflow and all this shit. I learned this from Thomas Colin 3D. If you want to learn more about topology, go check out his channel. You definitely don't want to have little long faces like these right here. This is going to completely fuck up your topology. Now we're going to make a change which might seem insignificant, but it's very important that you do this. You're going to go to side view three on the number pad and then in edit mode, you're going to select everything and rotate it by exactly 11.25 degrees. This is going to rotate the cylinder so that you don't have a vertex over here on the side, but instead you have an edge and this is going to allow us to create the shape of this microphone more correctly. And we're going to move over here to the side and with alt right click and face select mode we're going to select this middle face segment over here you can make sure it's the middle one by seeing where the y-axis intersects with the cylinder now just to make sure that you remember this you're going to press Control e mark seam that's going to make this shit red so now you're going to know this is exactly the middle of the microphone now select these nine faces over here and you're going to inset those with i in the inset faces menu down here you're going to set the thickness to something like 0.08 i think 0.05 would probably be better here here. And we're going to do the same thing over here on this next three by three tile. Now select this surface right here and press W loop tool circle. If you don't have your loop tools activated, go over here to edit preferences, add ons and type in loop tools, check this box right here. And now you're going to have this new set of tools where you can use the circle tool. If you're using blender 4.2, for some reason, they remove this. Now you got to download it. I can't help you. I don't update blender because they always do this shit. So when you use the loop tool circle tool, it usually busts up your model for some reason by twisting this circle. Obviously, we want this geometry to be aligned with the surrounding grid here. So we can adjust the rotation of this circle using this angle slider down here in this little circle menu. But the problem is we have to make sure that this is perfectly aligned with the edges up here. So we're going to go to top view with seven, go to wireframe view and zoom in on this upper edge over here. And you're going to adjust the angle until this edge aligns almost perfectly with this line in the background grid. It's hard to make it perfect. You don't really have to make it perfect. Just get as close as you can. Now we're going to copy the angle value here and we're going to select this surface and do the same thing one more time. Make sure it's the exact same angle down here. Then we're going to select these vertices and join them with J. And just to make this a little bit easier to work with, we're going to delete the faces in the front and the back. And we're also going to delete the entire lower half of the cylinder, as well as the back quarter here, which we're not working on right now. That way we can just mirror this later on and it's going to be much better. Now in edge select mode, select this edge and slide it to the side with double G. Do the same thing with this one over here, then select everything, press M merge by distance. Now select this vertex down here and slide it towards this one. Slide this vertex over to the same point, then do the same thing on the other side. And once again, select everything and press M merge by distance. Now we've got to take care of the upper part of the cylinder. I know this probably seems really complicated, especially if you're a beginner, but just pay attention because the hardest part is almost over. So don't worry. Select these faces that that you see me selecting right now and press X delete vertices. Select this one, place the 3D cursor over here and use the 3D cursor as a pivot point. Select this vertex and scale it with shift X. That's gonna align it with this vertex over here on the Z and the Y axis. Now place the 3D cursor down here and scale this to zero on the X axis. And now we can delete these two vertices down here. That's gonna give us a nice little corner over here. Delete this vertex sticking out over here. Select this entire segment, press E to extrude, right click scale to zero on the X axis. Select everything and merge by distance. That's gonna connect these two vertices here. Now we just have to copy this corner over here to the other side. To do that, we're just going to delete this entire side here, place the 3D cursor right here, select this face segment, shift the right click scale to minus one of the X axis, select everything and merge by distance control and to correct the normals. Now the worst is over. The rest is going to be pretty easy in comparison. Select all of these faces over here on the side and delete them. Select this segment and we're going to make that a little bit thinner by moving it on the X axis like this. It just has to be a little bit thinner than this face segment down here. Place the 3D cursor on this 
this face at the top right here, then select everything and delete these middle faces, then shift the right click scale to minus one on the Y axis, correct the normals, merge vertices by distance, then place a 3D cursor on one of these faces down here, select this face loop, including this section over here without these faces, shift the right click scale to minus one on the Z axis, again, correct the normals and merge vertices by distance. And now we're going to have to have three of these rings. So in the modifier tab, we're going to go add modifier generate array, set X factor to zero, set Z factor to one, increase the count to three with control A, you're gonna apply this modifier, select everything, merge vertices by distance. And now you also wanna have one of these thicker segments over here on this side. So place the 3D cursor on this edge over here, select this and shift the right click SX minus one, control N, M merge by distance. And now we have the main frame for the microphone. Now let's add a little bit of thickness. To add the thickness in face select mode, we're gonna select everything and press Alt E, extrude faces along normals. Now we're gonna move our mouse in words like this to give it some thickness. You can hold down shift to get a little bit more control over this. It's supposed to be approximately this thick. Make sure to check even offset in this little menu down here. And in the back, we're going to delete this face segment, then select this outer vertex segment, extrude it on the X axis backwards a little bit, then you're going to scale it up a little bit like this. And now you're going to extrude this even further until you get somewhere around here, then you're going to fill this with F inset with I push it outwards a little bit on the X axis, then extrude it one more time like this inset with I select this edge loop here and bevel it with control B, you only want one segment. So you can extrude this face segment backwards a little bit like this, you can delete the selected faces, which are at the bottom of this little gap, make sure to correct all the normals with control N. And now with control two, we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier, use alt right click to select one of these edge loops to go around one of these holes, press shift G select similar face angles, you might have to increase the threshold to something like 0.02. Make sure that all the edges which are supposed to be sharp are selected. We also have to include this edge here and this one back here. And now with control B, we're going to create a small bevel here, scroll up once to give it two segments. And in this bevel menu, you're going to set the shape value here to one. And now that we got the frame ready, now we're going to make the mesh on the inside of the microphone. We're going to start making the inside of the microphone with a cube. So shift A, add a cube. Now in edit mode, press W subdivide and set the number of cuts here to two. Now in object mode, you're going to go to add modifier, deform, cast modifier, set the factor value here to one and apply this modifier. This is going to turn the cube into sphere. Now the reason we're doing it like this is because this is going to give us the exact right number of edges that we need around this sphere. I don't want to use a UV sphere because a UV sphere has this triangle shit on top, which I don't think looks good. So we're going to use this method instead. Now with control two, you're going to apply two levels of subdivision surface. And then once again, add a cast modifier with a factor of one and apply that. Now we've got a perfect sphere, which has 48 edges around this circle right here, which is good because we also have 48 edges on this circle on the inside of this frame. So when we bring these close together, the geometry is going to match perfectly. Now you're going to delete the lower half of the sphere, extrude this circle downwards to the bottom, then select this vertex at the top and use your proportional editing tool to lower this vertex down. This is is going to give you roughly the shape that you want to have here. Now you're going to play around with this to get the shape that you think is most suitable. But I think something like this is going to do it. And now we have to quickly UV unwrap this so that we can put a texture on it, because we're not going to model the surface of the microphone, we're going to use a texture for it. And to UV unwrap this properly, you're first going to select this circle right here, Control E mark seam, and then select two more opposite edges like this Control E mark seam. Now press U unwrap this and in the UV editing workspace. Now this is going to be correctly unwrapped as you can see right here. Now let's quickly talk about the textures on the microphone mesh, you first have to understand that there are two types of microphones, one of them is black, and the other one is silver like this. So you got to decide which one you want to make, I'm going to make the silver one, but you can use the same method to make the black one. I'm probably going to end up making renders of both. And then you have to also notice that there is an outer layer and an inner layer. On the outside, you have this large grid and on the inside, you have a finer texture. So we're going to have to make two layers of texture. And every layer is going to have to have two images. For the outer layer, we're going to need a normal map. This is going to define the bumps on the surface and make it look three dimensional. And then we're going to need a black and white version of the same shit. And we can use this black and white image to define the color, the specularity, the metallic value and the transparency. And then we're going to have to use the same thing for the inner texture. So we're gonna have a normal map and a color map for the outer layer. And then we're gonna have another normal map and another color map for the inner layer. And I made those textures by modeling these surfaces and baking them onto a plane right here. I don't want to go too deep on how to make these kind of textures in this video, because that's going to take too much time. I went deep on baking normal maps and producing all sorts of sophisticated textures inside my blender ebook, you can check that out as an entire texture and section on top of the modeling chapters, you're going to be able to understand how this works a lot better. 
but I also made another version of a microphone mesh in another video, which you can check out for free if you don't want to buy nothing. You can also download this model and all the textures from my Patreon page. So let's apply those textures, which we just talked about. We're going to go over to the shading workspace. And first, we're going to make the outer layer. So add a new material here and name that outer. So first, I'm going to drag and drop the two images, which I need for the outer layer. This here is a normal map. So I have to set that to non-color. And then with Shift A, I'm going to add a normal map node, plug that up and plug it into the normal input here. Now you can already see the pattern on the surface of the microphone. We're going to select this texture and with Control key, we're going to add a node wrangler to control this texture a little better. If you don't have it, you can also go up here to edit preferences, add-ons, type in a node, check this box right here. And now you can press control T to add these nodes. Plug that into both your image textures. Here, we're going to increase the scale to something like five. Let's go higher. Let's try 12. And now this black and white image is going to be plugged into metallic. Then we're going to open up specular and plug this into the IOR level. And we're also going to plug this shit into alpha. That way, when we go to rendered view and cycles, the inside of this pattern is going to be transparent so you can see through it. I'm going to rotate this texture by 45 degrees on the Z axis to get a better pattern on the side, you might also have to rotate this object by 45 degrees to align it better at the top. I'm going to adjust the rotation on the inner object so I can't see the seams. And now in object mode, you're going to duplicate this object. In edit mode, use Alt S to deflate that a little bit. Now for the inner object, we're going to duplicate this material and rename it into inner. Now we just got to replace these images with the inner diffuse and the inner normal. That's going to give us this inside texture here. I'm going to change the size of this pattern to something like 55, maybe even 88. So Reddit can call me a racist. Now we just need a simple black material for the frame. And next, we're going to create the fork that holds the microphone or whatever the fuck you call this thing to make the fork start by placing the 3d cursor around this face segment over here now with shift a you're going to add a cube scale that cube so it's just outside of this microphone scale it on the z-axis delete these three faces here now take these edges and pull them backwards a little bit to around here somewhere and you can pull this face backwards a little bit as well now give me two loop cuts over here and we're going to pull this face even further back then select these vertices in the front press ctrl b but press v to only bevel vertices make sure you press c to enable clamping scroll up a couple of times set the shape value to 0.5 if you want to have good topology here so thomas Collin can improve instead of using this method you're going to add a circle then you're going to go to face grid fill for that circle adjust the offset a little bit and then you're going to delete one half of this circle and extrude everything else out of this geometry like this but i'm not going to do that now because i don't think it's necessary so first we're going to select all of these edges here and bevel them once with Control b we want this bevel to be approximately this large give me two segments and a shape value of one now select the inner edges on all these bevels and with Control be you're going to bevel them one more time now you're going to scroll up a couple of times set the shape value here to 0.5 make sure the faces on the outside of the second bevel are as wide as the faces on the inside of the new bevel now select everything extrude faces along normals to give it a little bit of thickness place a 3d cursor between these vertices right here next we're going to make this knob on the side to do that we're going to add a new cylinder let's go for 32 vertices then you're going to select all the edges exactly on the side on every quarter like this x dissolve edges you can do that one more time with the next two edges now select the top and the bottom and bevel it with control b two segments shape value one add a subdivision surface modifier you can replace this top face with a grid fill make a circle on the middle of this little knob right here using the circle loop tool inset with i extrude this little gap here inwards bevel all the sharp edges place the 3d cursor at the bottom so that you can place the origin point right there and now just snap that over to the side rotate it scale it down parent it to this part i just noticed that on the black version of the microphone the knob looks a little bit different but fuck it i'm not going to change it now finally we need a circle down here at the bottom so shift a give me a new circle extrude extrude again scale up extrude extrude again add a loop cut right here scale that part down extrude up one more time now inset with i i want to have a loop cut right here then i'm going to extrude this surface right here inwards and turn that into a little circle i'm supposed to have some kind of a little hole here so there's that i'm going to delete the same geometry on the other side using my 3d cursor as a pivot point i'm going to bring this over to the other side fill this with f select all the sharp edges here include these edges here as well control b to bevel them give me something similar down here at the bottom as well bevel all the sharp edges object shade smooth let's do a little bit of subdivision surface and now the main part of this microphone is ready and i was planning to finish this video here but then i saw this picture on google and i decided we have to make the rest of this microphone holder as well i figured you're probably going to be more likely to click on this video if i put this shit in the thumbnail as well i'm going to try to not make this video too much longer so we're going to do this very quickly if you got any questions you can ask me below or you can ask me on instagram or whatever First, we gotta rotate this microphone by 180 degrees. And now we need to create a little metal ring up here. So 
let's place a 3D cursor here. Shift A, I want a cylinder which is gonna have about 128 vertices. Make that cylinder very thin and then we're gonna select only the sides like this. Inset with I, then inset individually with another I. Inset it about this far, then use Alt S to inflate it. This is gonna give you the knurling so you can spin it. Now I'm also gonna select the faces at the top and the bottom and extrude them a little bit further like this, scale them down a little bit like this. Then we have to duplicate this and the duplicated version has to have a smaller radius but it has to be a little bit thicker. So we're gonna select this and lift it up. I really like this knob much better than the one that we created so let me quickly do that as well. I need a cylinder which is gonna have a number of vertices which is divisible by three. I'm gonna go with 60, let's put that over here to the side. Bevel this edge with one segment. Then I'm gonna use my knife tool to cut out a section like this. Delete the geometry there. You can fill this with F and you can clean up the geometry here if you want to. I'm just gonna add some more edges down here. That way I can connect this just in case Thomas Cullen is watching. Now we have to have three of these cuts here. So I have to figure out a way to cut out the third that has this cut already delete everything else and then duplicate it and place it where it needs to be. I'll delete these two faces first. We had 60 edges in the full circle, so I gotta delete 80 faces so I have one third left. I'll select these two faces. Right now I have two selected, it says up here. You can enable this menu using the statistics button right here. And now I'm just gonna add Control plus until I have 80 faces selected. Delete those faces, place a 3D cursor in the middle. Alt E, spin, use duplicates. I want three steps. My cut's way too fucking big, so I'm gonna do the same thing again with a smaller cut. Then we're gonna run another cylinder through these rings here, inset that cylinder at the top, bevel this edge segment here, and now we gotta create some kind of shape where this is gonna connect. Here's how I'm gonna do that. With shift A, I'm going to add a circle which is gonna have about 32 vertices. I'm gonna flip that sideways. I'll fill this for now and place my 3D cursor over here, extend this vertex out, and we're gonna extrude this and bring it up to the top here where we're gonna connect it with this vertex. Now we gotta add some loop guts here so we can have cleaner topology. I can also use the geometry from the circle to create this shape. Same thing over here at the top. E to extrude this. Now I gotta extend a face over here. Scale this edge down and bevel its vertices with Control B and V. Duplicate this curve and bring it up to here to the top. And now we can just use a grid fill to fill this part here properly. We're gonna need a hole down here, so we need some more geometry. Let's add some loop cuts to match these edges up here at the top. That's 12 vertices, so we need 12 loop cuts. I need more geometry, so give me more loop cuts. Now I just need a big ass hole down here. I'm gonna use my loop tool circle to create that. As you can see here, my hole got fucked up. So I gotta figure out something else. To turn this into a circle, I just had to spam a combination of relax, space, and circle tools. I don't know if this is how you're supposed to do it. I don't know if it's a bug or something. Anyway, we got a circle. Now we need more geometry up here so we can connect this circle over here at the top. Loop tools didn't give me a clean circle, so I'm gonna use a shrink wrap circle instead. That's gonna give me a perfect circle from the top. Now I just gotta connect these two surfaces, and now I should be able to make a decent circle. And now I can connect that up here, and I got a perfect hole. Now we gotta extrude this circle on the side a little bit. Now I just attach this shape to this little rod here, and we're good to go. Now we need this shape over here, which I'm not gonna show you how I made. Give that a little bit of thickness. I also added two screws right here, and now I just need to make the rods that are gonna hold the microphone to do that I have this little C shape. I'll extrude these faces out. Then I'll inset these surfaces here and delete them and connect them because I want to have some kind of a hole here. Then I got this cable right here that I got from another microphone that I made a long time ago. There's another video where I made that shit on my channel. I'll put the link in the description below. I think that's enough. I'm going to cut this video right here. Here's what we have so far. If you want to learn more about 3D modeling and product visualization and how to make money with Blender, or if you just want to be in a community of people who are serious about 3D modeling and are working every day towards a better future, then check out my Blender School. There's going to be a link for that below. If you want to ask me a question, you can do that on Instagram. I'll see you on the next one.